It is the afternoon of August 16th, 1918. The sky is overcast. The surf is heavy. Without warning, an explosion rocks the sea far in the distance. Lookout reports great quantities of water shot through the air. The most highly decorated maritime rescue in American history has begun. The explosion was a result of a torpedo launched from a German U-boat. U-boat attacks like this one were made throughout World War I in an attempt to reduce Allied shipping off the coast of America. During World War I, uh, most Americans were unaware of the fact that Germany even had submarines. And so when they started attacking on the East Coast, uh, in small groups really, um, the first number of ships that went down, uh, people thought uh, they were just blowing up by themselves. For sailors, life would have been uncertain. The possibility of their ship being decimated by an unseen enemy was real and evident. So um, our sailors, to answer your question, were, were pretty much unprepared. Mariners who found themselves in the raging sea had only one glimmer of hope, the life-saving service. The life-saving service was the forerunner of the U.S. Coast Guard. They operated 24-7 in any conditions, waiting for the call to launch their modest surf boats into an unpredictable sea. To complete the task of seaborne rescue requires tremendous amounts of leadership. Yeah. And then he also just has to have good judgment, you know, not uh, knowing when to say no and when to say, okay, I will go is a big deal. Surf boat number 1046, Chickamacomico Life Saving Station. Lifesavers labor for 30 minutes to launch their rescue ship into the violent surf. The man at the helm of the crew, John Allen Midget Jr. An embodiment of all the ideals of the U.S. Coast Guard, John Midget Jr. was born to Phoebe O'Neill and John Allen Midget Sr. in Chickamacomico, North Carolina. After attending a local village school, John Allen Jr. received formal education at a private academy in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Unsurprisingly, he returned to Chickamacomico to enlist in the life-saving service. The Midget family had strong roots in the U.S. life-saving service, which was no doubt an influence on his decision to follow in that tradition. He served in the life-saving service continuously through its merge with the Revenue Cutter Service to form the U.S. Coast Guard. Early in his service, he grew a profound fondness and respect for the vast sea which made him a superior officer among his fellow life-savers. He was a kind man, a courageous officer and a capable leader. The role of the leader is one of responsibility, sensibility, and esprit de corps. John Allen Jr. understood these character traits. He lived by them. They gave him the foundation he would need to become the hero of lore he is known for today. John Allen Midget Jr. and his crew struggled to escape the breaking waves near the beach in front of their life-saving station. Launching their small surf boat into the ocean would only be the first challenge. Five miles of raging ocean swells lie between Captain Midget and the burning wreckage of the Merlot. Traveling over the open sea would be a daunting task. However, the men in surf boat number 1046 were prepared. The United States Life Saving Service was a federal organization that existed nationwide on all of America's coasts from um, 1871 until 1915 when it merged with the U.S. Revenue Ser Cutter Service to form today's Coast Guard. And they saved literally thousands of lives one soul at a time. Training on equipment varying from cannon launched grappling hooks to the humble beach cart, surfmen became indomitable teams. These teams were indispensable when attempting rescues through the use of surf boats. The backbone of the life-saving service, surf boats, were small wooden watercraft designed to get lifesavers to shipwrecks and bring back survivors safely to shore. To operate these versatile crafts in rescue missions was a feat in itself. They required five to six crewmen and a commanding officer who would steer and give orders. 
John Allen Midget Jr. was confident in these roles while leading his men into the ever-intensifying storm. His crew had trained for this very moment every week for months. He was noble and brave. Whatever the odds, he was going to bring back those sailors. The sea is enraged. The Merlot continues to billow smoke. Surfboat number 1046 draws nearer and nearer to the wreckage. Captain Midget shouts orders to his comrades. They reach one of the Merlot's lifeboats where the captain informs Midget of the situation. Midget continues on to the Merlot wreckage. The men look up to him for direction as the boat approaches the burning sea. An unimaginably large wall of flames. The ocean seems to be on fire. The sailors of the Merlot lie in the inferno. This is the last point of return for Midget and surfboat number 1046. If they are to rescue the sailors, it is now or never. The call is on John Allen Midget Jr.'s shoulders. Captain Midget orders the crew forward, into the unknown. The crew is uneasy, but their leader is calm and collected. The flames scorch the wood of the surfboat and singe the hairs of its occupants. Midget and the men search for survivors in what can only be described as a living hell. Midget heads the scorched boat through the burning debris in hopes of finding the missing crewmen of the Merlot. They are able to rescue six, whose lifeboat had capsized. The six survivors pulled from the sea are dazed from having to dive under the water to escape the flames. Miraculously, they only suffer minor burns. Captain Midget makes the call to head southward, away from the remains of the ship. He hopes to find the third Merlot lifeboat the captain had told him about earlier. The third boat is spotted about nine miles southeast of the life-saving station. Midget drives the boat alongside and gives the order to prepare to tow. Surfboat number 1046 with the third lifeboat in tow returns to meet the first lifeboat, where number 1046 ferries the survivors to shore. In all, 42 sailors were rescued from the Merlot, all thanks to the efforts of John Allen Midget Jr. and his valiant crew. Midget's cool management of an extremely stressful situation helped save the lives of the Merlot survivors from a fiery death. The legacy of John Allen Midget Jr. is one of the, the greatest heroes in, in American history. And, and so also he represented what the United States Life Saving Service was, which is a real tragedy to me because so many Americans um, have never even heard of it, much less know anything about it. Years after the Merlot rescue, Midget was sent to the Philadelphia Navy Yard, most likely to act as a consultant on German submarine activity on the East Coast, although his work is still classified. Upon returning to Cape Hatteras, he became a leader in the community, taking an interest in improving things like infrastructure and education. After years of service in the U.S. Coast Guard, John Allen Midget Jr. died a Chief Warrant Officer in 1938 after complications suffered from a car accident. He is buried on Roanoke Island. Captain Johnny, as he was known, has achieved almost folklore status in the Coast Guard. He's an inspiration for young and old alike. You know, those guys walking up and down the beach for miles at a time, pushing that huge cart, you blink without batting an eye, you know. I definitely think that that shaped the um, it gave the, the Coast Guard good roots and a good backbone. In remembrance of the mighty midgets of Chickamacomico, the North Carolina Navy League Council, the state of North Carolina, and the U.S. Coast Guard proclaimed Midget Day on July 2nd, 1972. The same day, the Coast Guard named its latest cutter after Chief Warrant Officer John Allen Midget Jr. He was described by people who knew him as a man who took life by the scruff of the neck to accomplish his goals yet he remained a compassionate man and a friend to many.